And welcome to the Aaron Katzman Show. I'm your host, Aaron Katzman. We're here to speak to you about your life, your money, and your investments. And as always, we're coming to you from the spiritual and soon-to-be financial capital of the world, Jerusalem, Israel. If you've got any questions or comments, feel free to email me at Aaron, A-A-R-O-N, at Lighthouse with an L, lighthousecapital.co.il. That's Aaron at lighthousecapital.co.il. You can check me out on the web at www.aaronkatzman.com. That's www.aaronkatzman, aaronkatzman.com. Follow me on Twitter and be sure to subscribe on the brand new YouTube channel where you get all the videos and the podcasts and everything. There's some great content there. We've got a great show, right? Because I mentioned in my little tagline that it's gonna, Jerusalem is soon to be the economic and financial capital of the world. And what better person to have on as a guest than Flor Hassan Nahum, who is actually deputy mayor of the city of Jerusalem. And more importantly, even, she is in charge of foreign relations, economic development, and tourism. She comes from Gibraltar. How cool is that? We'll talk about that a little bit. And she is a qualified barrister, which I believe in American English is a lawyer. Um, she's been in Israel for, for almost 20 years. I don't want to date you, but you've been here since uh, 2001. Um, you had your own communications consulting business called Message Experts. Um, you're all over the place doing really, really good things. Floor, welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Aaron. It's great being here with you. I appreciate that. Tell us a little bit about um, your background. Gibraltar is really cool. How you came to Israel and how you got involved in politics, and, and we'll take it from there. That's a great question. So Gibraltar is a wonderful little British protectorate in southern Spain. So I literally grew up in the, in the Iberian Peninsula, even though I'm British. And, but my family originally come from Spain, from the Jews that had to run away uh, when, when the, you know, when the uh, Inquisition happened. And so my family has been in Gibraltar for 350 years. Wow. Um, my father was born there, his father was born there, etc. Um, and I was raised a Zionist, you know, I was raised with the love of Israel when I was 14 years old. I came here for the first time. I fell in love. I wanted to be part of, you know, the, the, the common destiny and self-determination of the Jewish people after 2000 years. I was very excited about that. So I always grew up with that in the back of my mind. I trained as a lawyer. I'm glad, you know, Americans, when they see my bio, they say Flo was a barista, like I made coffee. <laughs> 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 a barrister. You didn't make is, this cup, thank you. Yes, a barrister is a litigating lawyer. It's a litigator, basically. Um, and I became a lawyer. My father was a lawyer. My father was also a politician. And I say that, I, I say that because I think people ask me, how did you get into it? Especially when you're a woman. It's not something that, that you know, people associate, especially with an immigrant. Um, you know, sometimes you do what you, what you know. And I saw my father you know, and his public service. And I was always uh, into the idea of being able to use your talents and, and, um, and your energy to contributing to your neighborhood, your society, your city. So I came with that from the house. I came with very strong Zionist roots. Um, I was in England, I practiced law, and then my husband and I decided to make Aliyah before we had kids because I thought it would be very difficult with kids. And I, I'm right, I think it would have been difficult with kids because kids are difficult anyway. Uh, just raising kids is difficult. <laughs> so, so I made Aliyah in uh, 2001, worked in nonprofit for many, many years. And then in 2011, I decided to set up my own business. And what I found in Israel was um, that there's a lot of talent here. There's a lot of innovation here. And the main problem for Israelis is actually communicating what they do in a way that resonates with, um, with the public abroad, whether it's the UK, the US, even Europe. Um, and, and I kind of developed a niche in helping people uh, explain what they do, especially scientists and high-tech companies, explain what they do to a wider non-professional audience so that anybody can understand what you're doing and its value. And that adds strength to the industry 
it also adds strength to the state of Israel. So I did that for a long time. And it was in that context that I came to politics because a small political party had heard of the work that I'd been doing in the high tech sector and in the nonprofit sector. And they invited them to help me, and they invited me to help them with their, their messaging and their public speaking. And that's how I got sucked in. Um, so I've been involved in politics now in Israel for, as a representative for four years. I've been deputy mayor for almost two years. And when the mayor said, what do you want to do? And I, I said, I want to be the foreign minister of Jerusalem. And I want to do economic development because I believe in peace through economic development. We have, we have very poor population groups in the city. The only way we're ever going to move forward with any of them is if we bring opportunity, not handouts, opportunity. And so strengthening the technological sector in the city, strengthening the tourism sector, strengthening the biotech sector, because we have a niche that we've developed here. That's the way to bring economic opportunity to everybody. And that's the way that we're gonna finally have peace in this very beautiful, but complex city of Jerusalem. Don't forget, we have to become the financial capital of the world or else I'm gonna be a lawyer, a, a liar, excuse me. I've been saying that for We years. will, uh, let me tell you what. Today, I have some news for you. Today, we just came out as the leading OECD country for technological investment. We have the most technological students here and the most investment in the technological field here. And we have now come top of the OECD. So when you reap, when you, when you, when you plant the seeds, we will become the financial capital because we have the largest investment. That's great. Um, so you're involved obviously with economic development. Pre-corona, if we, you know, we go back to January, Jerusalem was hopping. Right, like you have to, you can't see. We have five million tourists in 2019. Five million tourists. Unbelievable. So behind me, you can't see because I have to keep the curtains down because the sun's coming in. But you know, they say the national, the national bird of Israel is the crane, right? So behind yeah. me, there are a bunch of construction cranes, and then down the street, <laughs> they're always tourists. So now, obviously, where do you live? I live in Katama, but my office is in, uh, on Rough Cook Street, right in the center of town. Nice, so you're my neighbor. You have to come see us. Okay. Well, yeah, you're right down the, you're right down, the, you're one stop, not even one stop. I'm on Rough Cook a lot. There's two important things on Rough Cook. Now three, now that you tell me that you're there. You have Bates Rough Cook, which right. is an amazing place that people don't even know about. It's a real hidden gem. And the other place is the media center where I go and get interviewed sometimes. So you should come up because I'm right. I literally sit right on top of the media center. Wonderful. If I jump up and down, you'll hear me next time. So okay. what is being done right now to, through Corona? What steps are being taken to sort of, pro, I don't want to say prop up, but oftentimes during, I've spoken to a lot of people and there's opportunity, right? Through all the misery and everything that we found through Corona, there's also opportunity. So where are you sort of guiding your resources to sort of capitalize on the opportunity and help the city economically? So I tell you what we've come up in a very good light during this Corona, and that is in diagnostic technologies. We have, as you know, a very important biotech cluster here, thanks to the best uh, teaching hospital in the country, which is Hadassah Hospital which is of course uh, connected to Hebrew University. Um, and we've actively developed very close ties between academia and, um, and industry here, Hadassah Hospital, Hebrew University and Azraeli College that has a lot of biotech. So we believe that it starts with the intellectual capital and the intellectual capital comes from our um, academic institutions. So that's our kind of our first port of call. And what we've done is, we've engaged the, the academic institutions to open themselves up to industry, to accelerators, innovation centers, to different um, training programs that they've developed with industry. And so during the corona, what we saw is that all that investment that we put in in the last seven years, we actually saw results. We saw Jerusalem leading in diagnostic technology for the testing of the corona. Um, that's one of the things that we've really come shining through. And the other thing that I'm pushing, because it's my portfolio, is tourism tech, especially in the post-corona era. Now, we have technology that's been developing over the number of years that limits um, the contact between the tourist and the hotel. Like, you can check in on your, on your phone. You can even have a key. A key. You open the hotel room with, with a key on your phone. Um, for an example, we have 
a technology that limits numbers in different, in different uh, areas, in different tourist sites. We have all sorts of, we have technology that actually apply, um, uh, designs the tour to avoid crowds. We have amazing stuff going on. So I want to position Jerusalem as the post-corona cleanest, greenest tourism city. So that's something I'm working on within my portfolio, but I'm also happy to be able to bolster all the biotech that's going to get us out of this mess in the first place, because testing is the first step to solving the problem. I just, just now I read that uh, the Ben Gurion Airport is going to open a test center to travelers for when you get there, for when you land, for when people land, so we can do away with this whole 14 day, which is what's killing tourism. Well, uh, this is the Aaron Katzman Show. I'm your host, Aaron Katzman. We speak to you about your life, your money, and your investments. If you've got any questions or comments, feel free to email me at Aaron, A-A-R-O-N, at Lighthouse with an L, lighthousecapital.co.il. That's Aaron at lighthousecapital.co.il. You can check me out on the web at www.aaronkatzman.com. That's www.aaronkatzman, AaronKatzman.com. You can find me on Twitter. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. Um, it's my honor to be speaking. It's a, a very interesting conversation with Flora Hassan Nahum, who is the deputy mayor of the city of Jerusalem, the holiest city out there. And she has the uh, merit of being the deputy mayor, mayor. She's also in charge of, she, she deems herself the foreign minister of Jerusalem. And if I can compliment you, your English is a lot better than the current foreign minister. <laughs> so... <laughs> or, or, <laughs> I had to not say. hard, <laughs> not hard. <laughs> um, how can people get in touch with you if they have questions about? You know? I'm very accessible, Erin. I really am. I they can Twitter message me. They can DM me on Facebook. You can find my. I can give you my email: f l e u r h n at jerusalem dot muni dot i l. F l e u r h n at jerusalem dot muni dot i l. And I'm a very accessible person, always happy to hear people's comments, ideas. I meet a lot of people, I like to listen. I understand that I don't know everything and it's important for, for, for public participation purposes to keep talking to the public that you represent and I'm a big believer in that. So feel free, anybody. Great, that's, that's fantastic. Um, we're speaking a little bit about, you were talking about like tech tourism. Obviously, Jerusalem, the major, one of the major uh, uh, economic drivers of the city is, in fact, tourism. It's the most visited tourist uh, city in Israel and one of the most in the world, yeah. right? Obviously, yeah. you know, I went down earlier today to the, to the grocery on Rehov Yafo that I've been frequenting for the last 11 years. And I actually asked him, how are things doing? And obviously, you know, there are not a lot of tourists, not a lot of people coming to town. Um, yeah. What are you sort of doing for the non-high-tech tourists, sort of, you know, whether it's tour guides or shops or, you know, there's so much of the so city. What, so just to put in perspective, Jerusalem, 80% of its tourism comes from outside of Israel in comparison to 80% of Elat tourism, which comes from in, within Israel. So most of our tourism comes from outside of Israel and you are 100% right, 20 to 30% of our income and our jobs are tourism oriented, which means that this crisis has been a huge hit for the economy of our city. And so I went um, as a tourism portfolio holder and I got in touch with uh, the different ministries and I managed to raise money from the Jerusalem ministry for a big campaign for local tourism. I want all the Israelis to say, hey, we don't know Jerusalem. We go to Prague every summer. We go to Paris. We go to Rome. But Jerusalem has got better sites, more entertainment for kids, an amazing culinary and cultural scene. So I, um, we put together a campaign that came out last week to come and visit Jerusalem, to come and visit the Holy City. Campaign is for families, for, for, for individuals, for couples. You come and stay a night in a hotel in Jerusalem, and we give you a packet of goodies. At free entrances to tourist sites, a free culinary tour, um, a free uh, you know, menus for 30 shekels for kids, for 20 restaurants. We have a bunch of, uh, of real incentives to come to our city uh, and the hotel prices have gone down. We've got, special, we've got special offers for the second, third night in a hotel room. 
just come to our city. You don't have Paris to say you have something much better, Jerusalem. <laughs> uh, that's fantastic. I think that's probably the best way to end, uh, the, end the interview. There's nothing like Jerusalem. Flora, I want to nothing thank like you it. so much. It was really an honor. Thanks, I'd love Kevin. to have you back uh, as we get through Corona. Oh, come anytime you want. You know, it's, it's very interesting, and, and you're, as you said, you're really accessible. So anybody who's got any questions out there who want to connect, who want to do business with Jerusalem, want to start a business, whatever it is, uh, feel free to contact her. Um, I'm sure she'd be happy to speak with you. Thank you, Aaron. Thanks for having me on. And this has been the Aaron Katzman Show. I'm your host, Aaron Katzman. We speak to you about your life, your money, and your investments. Again, if you've got any questions or comments, feel free to email me at Aaron, A-A-R-O-N, at Lighthouse with an L, lighthousecapital.co.il. That's Aaron at lighthousecapital.co.il. You can check me out on the web at www.aaronkatzman.com. That's www.a-a-r-o-n-k-a-t-s-m-a-n, aaronkatzman.com. Feel free to check me out on Twitter. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to the brand new YouTube channel where you're going to get all the content, content that's produced on one platform. Thanks so much, everybody, and we'll uh, see you soon.